Well, what you see here on the bench is... Wait, no. We need to go back further than that, to when this ETX story really begins. Pick the board up from Cathars in Cambridge. Yes, this is where it really starts. Right after I got back from Cambridge, I set it all up with a ROM switcher, technically that was meant for an A600, so not the best fit, but it has all the ROM images I need to see this issue for myself. It's most obvious on Kickstart 2 or higher. The colours here are just wrong. There's visible corruption and strange glitching effects on the screen when it's animating. Kickstart 1.3 looks absolutely fine. Grind loads up with no problem. But once you're into the game, the display just goes crazy. My first thought that it was something to do with maybe the blitz signal going to Gary from Agnes. This is basically Agnes just telling Gary that hey, I'm using the chip RAM and nobody else should be. I probed around and it didn't look as clean as I would like, but nothing that was a smoking gun, nothing that was obviously wrong. Hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. On the A500 and 500 Plus, the blitz signal goes straight from Agnes to Gary, and I've seen weird things happen when that connection isn't quite right. So you can see that trace runs right through the infamous battery blast zone on the A500 Plus, I'll link a video all about battery damage in the description below. You might want to check that out. But on the A2000, things are a little bit different. There's extra logic that ignores Blit if the ROM is enabled. So what I'm going to do is wire the Blit signal from Agnes directly to Gary in the same way as it is on the A500. I'm going to remove this IC and I'm going to put a jump across the relevant pins. It's looking very promising. Let's do a three-fingered salute, control Amiga Amiga, to reset it to make sure it is in fact working. And nope, the color corruption is back. But interestingly, the glitching seems to have gone. OK, back goes on the 74HTC04. So Cathars hadn't tried out swapping the CPU, so I've got a known good one here. Nope, no change. My next theory was maybe that the Agnes socket wasn't making the best of contacts, for whatever reason. So with permission from Cathars, I removed the existing socket and put a new one in. If nothing else, the black aesthetic is in line with the rest of the sockets and means that everything looks the same now. But still no real change to the output, it's still glitching and it's still doing weird stuff. Cathars did say that all the RAM tested perfectly fine in both Diagram and Amiga Test Kit. And apart from some subtle red line glitches behind the font, everything checks out fine. At this point, I was really at a loss. The way this issue presents, I can't actually reconcile how these memory tests are actually passing. So I did what any YouTuber would do. I put up a plea for your help. Well, what you see here on the bench is an Amiga 2000, but a recreation in the E80X form factor. This particular one belongs to one of my Patreons, Cathars. And this has a very, very, very strange problem. And you did not disappoint. The support and suggestions came flooding in. And thank you, everyone who commented. One comment stood out, though. Now that's compelling evidence. So when the 5 volt component arrived, it was off with the 3V chip and on with the new 5V one. I'll also need to change the jumper settings. By default, the board is set at 3.3V because the bomb 
specifies this 3 volt part, which I'm hoping is the problem. So if you wanted to create your own ETX A2000 recreation, PCBYR our sponsors will be able to help you with that. This board is available on their shared projects section, along with a plethora of other Amiga based projects. I use PCBWay for all of my projects, and I find the shared projects is a great way to give back to those creators, as commission goes to that creator every time you buy one of those shared projects. PCBWay produce prototype PCBs for as little as $5, and they've been in the game for well over 10 years, and branched out into other service offerings, like 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and CNC machining. All this and more is available on PCBWay.com. So thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. change the jumper settings to make sure this chip has the 5 volts it requires. With just serial output connected, it's quicker to set up. I can already tell the RAM isn't showing up. This is likely to be a power issue. much better. The RAM is actually connected now. But we've got an address issue. See how these values are repeating? It's reading the same location even though it's been given a different address. Do you ever wish that sometimes you could freeze frame a single moment in your day, look at it and say, this is not my life. Let's reflow everything. Lots of flux, lots of hot air. We'll make sure any hidden solder is cleared and that all the pads are firmly down. Now that's more like it. Running test again, the original issue seems to have gone. Switching to kick 
grinds the load. And we don't have all the crazy corruption. It seems to be working absolutely fine. Kickstart 2 and 3.2 both look sharp, clean and glitch free. If you found this video in any part interesting or entertaining, then please click like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then why not consider subscribing? And while you're here, why not check this out next?